All right, so today we're going at the top G, the top dog, big G, Andrew Tate. For every steak you don't eat, I'll eat two. He's basically a kickboxing superstar. He bashes people very badly in the ring and he thinks that because he is such a good kickboxer and world champion kickboxer, that anyone he is stronger than, he is correct in front of. <laughs> so in any debate, if he can kick your he wins, basically. So no logic or anything else necessary. But if you haven't seen Andrew Tate, he's been all over TikTok. Seriously, this guy is everywhere. You can't get away from him. He's got an opinion on everything from like just random things to like more serious philosophical things like religion. And he does have an opinion on veganism. He's got quite sexist views. Do you know how I cook a steak as a real man? I instruct one of my seven girlfriends. Me, now. You know, that's an understatement actually. Just heavily sexist views. Uh, I think he's trying to be like shocking with it, like some shock tactics. He does have this like look on his face like he's not 100% serious, but kind of. Oh, big Tate, big top G. I'm top G. Don't snap kick my head off either, mate. I'm just responding to what you're saying about veganism because I think like, look, I, I do think you got some inconsistencies there. And I do think if you knew a little more about it, maybe you would uh, approach it differently or maybe not. So what I thought I would do is just react to some of the top G's videos on veganism. Let's go for it. Look, if I meet someone and I like that person, and then they come along and go, oh, but I'm a vegetarian, it does make me like them less. As you can see, pretty logical already. Just for the fact that someone is a vegan, he won't like them. But the reason for that is because if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you deny reality. You better have a very good reason for saying that, mate, because I went vegan because I actually became aware of reality and stopped falling for the propaganda, the marketing, the humane slaughter this, the humane farm this, and you need meat and it's good for you, and all of these, this stuff that the meat industry perpetuate to me. But mainly, it was the horror of what farming and killing animals actually entails. That's what I thought was not morally justified. In fact, it is meat eaters who are completely disconnected from reality and won't accept it. You have to understand that vegetarianism and veganism is not a reality. It's not a human condition. It's a religion. That's very interesting for you to say, Andrew Tate, um, that veganism is a religion, like something people would blindly follow without evidence. Veganism is an ideology, but it's based in evidence and moral consistency. It is simply the moral position against the exploitation and cruelty to non-human animals. That's what veganism is, all right? Humans are omnivores. We eat everything. We eat meat, we eat plants, we eat lots of different things. So, so his point is humans are not vegetarians. In nature, we eat meat and we eat plants and historically, traditionally and evolution wise, we ate whatever we could get our hands on. So we're omnivores. He's trying to say that we're natural omnivores. There's a few things here. Human beings also throughout evolutionary history have murdered each other. We have committed pillage and horrible acts of violence against each other. Now, if I was to say, well, I'm not a murderer, would you say that you're just not accepting reality? Human beings have always murdered each other. Would you apply it in that context or are you just gonna apply it in the context of killing and eating animals? The other thing is human beings do not act like omnivores. Omnivores chase down their prey and they eat them still breathing in some cases, still blood pumping through their veins, just ripping off their faces. You know, we all know how carnivores and omnivores in nature eat. Human beings are more like necrovores. The animal's already been killed in a slaughterhouse and clinically packaged, completely disconnected from the animal from which it was torn. And people order someone else to cook it for them, like you do. Me, now. But let's keep going. So to say I'm a vegetarian isn't a reality because you're not a vegetarian. You believe in vegetarianism. You practice vegetarianism, but you are not a vegetarian. Veganism and vegetarian are very different. Vegan, uh, vegetarianism is just a diet that you don't eat meat. Veganism is a philosophy against the exploitation and cruelty to non-human animals. So just to get that straight, he's say, talking about vegetarianism. I'm gonna just conflate the two just for ease, but yeah. Because as a human, you're not a vegetarian. So that's the first thing, it's a religion. You know, we look more like plant eaters. Like, I don't wanna get into this appeal to nature because it's gonna suit me, but we do look like plant eaters. We don't have our claws, we don't have fangs. And you know, we sweat through our pores like other herbivores. It doesn't matter if we're naturally herbivore. 
what I care about is what is ethical and what is justified and what we ought to do um, as a society and whether or not we need to eat meat to survive and all of those things, we don't need to eat meat to survive. That's most important, so we're doing it for an unjustifiable reason. That is the pinnacle of the argument. Doesn't matter if we're naturally whatever. Doesn't matter. The fact is we can live without eating animals, so why are we doing this to them? And it's a religion which is fervently protected and defended and propagated as some kind of ethical life choice. It is an ethical life's choice, so what's the problem, bros? It's awfully pathetic to be a grown-up and judge your entire self-worth or to purport your personality based purely on what you do and don't put in your mouth. And that that's how you want to let the world know you're an individual. Well, I don't put loads of in my mouth. I don't put in my mouth. I don't put chess pieces in my mouth. Like, does that need a name? When we're talking about veganism, putting in your mouth or putting a chess piece in your mouth they're morally neutral things okay paying for the slaughtered body of an animal who didn't want to die consuming that contributing to the supply and demand chain of something so horrible is an immoral action okay so very different like it doesn't matter what you do in the bedroom or what object you put in your mouth but when you slaughter a living being to eat them there's a problem with that there's a problem with slaughtering a child or slaughtering a dog and eating them because of the dog and child's rights that were violated. Understand? To me, it's just inane. Like, why do you think this is so important? Oh, but the animals suffer. Shut the up. Shut up. The world is suffering. Ooh, the soft spot with the animals suffering. Come on, mate. The world is suffering. Everyone's suffering. So we should just commit the biggest mass murder and torture of animals that you could possibly imagine. We're talking like billions and trillions of animals. Because I stubbed my toe, I'm gonna go on a shooting spree. You suffer, I suffer, everybody suffers. And if you gave a about animals, which you don't anyway, because you give a about the cute ones, we don't give a about the cockroaches. I suppose there's more to give a damn about in say a cow and a pig than there is in an ant or a cockroach, mainly because of the depth of experience in those sentient beings. But to suggest that vegans just don't care about insects, I mean, I don't know about that. We avoid honey and honey is made from insects, uh, exploited bees. My level of care for an animal would be based on how much they experience the world. And then I would juxtapose that with my desire to consume their bodies or to exploit, be cruel to them and kill them. And I would say, is my pleasure worth their suffering and killing? That's how I sort of evaluate it. When it comes to the animal products I avoid, pigs, chickens, fish, and yes, honey, I just think that that's not justified to exploit and kill them for needless reasons. When it comes to insects feeding the population plants, insects will die in crop production, but it's really justified harm because the whole of human civilization would perish without crop production. So that's kind of how you evaluate that. But we wouldn't perish if we weren't mass murdering trillions of beings every year on top of the crops that we eat. So yeah, I can see that uh, category as completely unjustifiable slaughter. I mean, there's so many mistakes in it. In order to be a hypocrite, you'd first have to be going against some type of moral system we have. But like, I think eating plants is completely justified. I don't walk up and just kill cockroaches. But if termites are infesting your house, then that becomes like a self-defense thing, like it's categorized differently versus just going up to an ant's nest when they're just chilling and pouring poison down it because you want to see how much they can suffer or something like this. So I think there's justified versus unjustified harm, but let's keep going. And for something to survive, something else must die. This is a constant, it's a universal truth, and it's always been true. Big Tate, come on mate. Yes, for us to live, something has to die. That doesn't mean we should commit the biggest mass murder of animals you could possibly imagine on top of that. Bacon, fish, dairy, eggs, these all involve mass torture and killing of highly sentient beings. I think what you're about to say is that plants die so we can live, so what's the difference? But I'm just gonna let you say it. Even for a plant to live and strive and grow, it has to destroy or absorb minerals. Okay, so he's basically saying because plants suck nutrients from other plants, we should commit the biggest mass murder of animals you could ever possibly imagine for trillions of beings. Literally trillions. Literally. Or take it apart for something else to grow. This is the natural human condition. We don't care about what's natural. Horrible things happen in nature. If we were to think about the natural human condition, we're looking at some pretty horrible stuff, actually. But the way you're talking, Tate, is not making me pretty nervous. And, uh, you know, the way that you just 
think of like destroying and sucking the life out of others in order for us to live. It's a pretty horrible way to see the world. Uh, you might call yourself a realist, but there is ways of coexisting with other animals and, you know, trying to cause a lesser amount of harm and, and, and what I would call justified harm so that civilization can exist and uh, without causing all of that stuff on top of it. So why am I supposed to feel guilty for destroying an animal so that I can grow? when every single thing that's ever existed ever has destroyed something else to grow. You wouldn't feel guilty at all. You wouldn't even be saying, why should I feel guilty if you didn't have any feeling about it? We know you care about animals. You've said you care about animals. I'm gonna show everyone how much you care about animals, but the animal that you care about just looks different, is a different species. Now, what I want to do is apply all of your arguments you've said in this video to the animals that you love. So we got a dog cut walking up here, stray dog. Who's that? That's that's the Tates. He's got a machete. For bears or unsavory people. For bears or unsavory people, that looks like a self-defense there for that machete. Cute stray dogs. Yeah, or little tiny cute stray dogs. To be used on little tiny cute stray dogs, but what does Tate just go on to say? Come on, Tate. I'd never do that to a dog. Yeah, dogs are G. I like them. I'd never do that to a dog. Tate would never harm a dog with a machete. Tate, big G, top G. I think we saw the real you there. Bit of compassion. And we didn't see the facade that you espouse to others because, you know, you're, you've been in self-defense situations. You've got to put on the ego. You've got to put on the front. I get it. Been there, mate. I've been there. And you're quite a tough dude. You could snap kick most people's heads off. But uh, I do think you're morally inconsistent here because if you've seen a cow come up to you and not, not want to be killed or a pig come up to you and not want to be killed, uh, chicken chickens are adorable, beautiful little animals and it doesn't matter if they're cute or not, they're sentient conscious beings just like dogs are. You wouldn't want to see a dog be put in the position that your lifestyle puts cows, pigs and chickens in. So why would you think it's okay to do it to these other animals? Something for you to sort of analyze, mate, because you've been conditioned by culture. You're always talking about, you know, programming and you get a bit conspiratorial sometimes I've seen, but you know, this here is your cultural conditioning. Dogs of protectors and cows are to be eaten. Well, these are human created, selectively bred species to grow flesh off of their bodies of sentient conscious beings. They have to be killed for this. They have to be mass bred for this, tortured for this, mutilated en masse, right? So you have a massive inconsistency there. Let's keep going with old Tate. What's he got here? What kind of man eats salad? What kind of man eats salad? Someone who doesn't want to develop bowel cancer from lack of fiber, probably. Salad. In fact, I have an anti-vegetarian policy in my life. Anything that's ordered to my penthouse must include me. He's literally eating Pringles. Hey, guess what, Andrew Tate? Didn't you know Pringles are literally vegetarian? You're eating vegetarian food. So just contradict yourself there. But you know, we're not we're not here to nitpick old Big Tate, Big G. We don't want to go down from one of his snap kicks for nitpicking. We want to have a philosophical discussion with him. He's actually a host on the Alex Jones show. He goes on to talk about his strongest argument against vegans. Let's go. I'm a professional fighter and every professional fighter I've ever met eats meat. Meat is power. Vegetarians can't punch. I said it right here on my Twitter. I called out every vegetarian in the world. I said, there's not a vegetarian alive. I would not fight. So there you go. Tate has said it. The top G has said it. If you can't punch, then your philosophy against the exploitation and cruelty to animals is completely null and void. It does not matter. Also, another good argument for eating meat is every kickboxer that Andrew Tate knows eats meat. Well, guess what, Andrew Tate? Nearly everyone on the earth eats meat. The probability of that is quite high. You said uh, there's not a vegetarian on earth you wouldn't fight. Well, you know what? There's probably not a meat eater on earth you wouldn't fight either in the kickboxing ring because that's your, you are the world champion. You are the best kickboxer on earth. So that doesn't mean much either. Like, just get this straight. So if I learn to box quite well and I can bash, say, most of the meat eaters in my vicinity, does that mean that everyone in my vicinity should go vegan because I can bash them? Is this how you dictate your moral system by who can bash who? Who's got the hardest punch? That's what we ought to do morally. Come on, mate. Come on, Tate. Let's go, Tate, the big dog, back on cats and dogs. Anyone who tries to pretend cats are as good as dogs is a moron, by default. Dogs are useful. Dogs can do things. You can have a police dog, an attack dog, a guide dog, a guard dog. Dogs rescue bodies from rubble after earthquakes. Dogs genuinely save and improve lives. Cats do nothing but wait for you to feed them. So he, he kind of, it's kind of like he likes dogs, but for what they can do for people. I guess it, Tate measures the worth of life for what they can do or can't do for him. Not a very good way to see the world. 
Cats are useless. And it's amazing to me that people even try and put them in the same category. Cats and dogs shouldn't be put in the same category. Dogs are better than people. Dogs are the number one category. Dogs are above even humans. Then come humans. Then come nearly every other animal. Then shitty cat. <laughs> God, he's going off. He put dogs over humans, dogs over human beings, right? But you put cows? Where do you put cows? Below cats? Do you eat cats? I would happily eat a cat and I would never eat a dog. I would happily eat a cat, would never eat a dog. Well, you know, pigs are more intelligent than dogs. And all of these things that you're espousing about dogs, you could apply to pigs. And there's plenty of science on pig intelligence and empathy and uh, sentience consciousness. So I guess if any of the animals that you eat come close to dogs, then I guess you would have to stop eating them too, but he would eat a cat. <laughs> I mean, would you kill a cat to eat the cat? Like just a cat that did nothing wrong to you? I mean, there's inconsistencies all over the place. Now, in your first video, you said that there's so many points of hypocrisy to do with veganism. Well, there's a lot of points of hypocrisy with what you're saying too, Big Tate. Let's keep going. We've got a little bit more on Tate. I actually think that's disgusting. You don't steal a man's dog. You should let him in jail. You don't steal somebody's You don't steal someone's yeah. dog? It's disgusting. He hates it. Look, if, imagine if I stole your dog. You steal my dog, someone's gonna die. Like, this is how much he would defend his dog. He would put a hit out on you, or he would... And I wouldn't put it past him either. He probably, probably got the money and power to do stuff like that, this guy. He's not, like, not a powerful person. He is a powerful person. He's got a lot of money, but I wouldn't touch Tate's dog if, I, if you were thinking about it. But um, he would literally kill someone for touching his dog. But the animals that he eats, not a care about? Not a care about? I, would, I wonder if Tate, right? Tate, let me say this. I don't think Tate's all bad, all right? He's not all bad. You've seen him with that stray dog. Listen to this. I have my dogs. I have five dogs, and I actually give a lot of money. Romania has a lot of stray dogs, and I rescue stray dogs. I've rescued okay. maybe 100 dogs so far. So I take them off the street. I give them the injections they need. I make them trip on my feet until they find a home. These dogs have pure hearts. Even if a dog attacks you, it's well. pure hearts. I've had dogs bite me, right? but even if it bites me, it's with pure heart. He's got a dog charity where he rescues dogs, uh, looks after him, microchips and rehomes them. Like, for him to do that, he obviously does care about dogs. He cares about the individuals inside of those little, uh, the dog suit that they wear. But, like, just because another individual animal is wearing a pig suit, why should we justify the difference of treatment? You know, look, mate. I think you've got a heart there. I just think you're massively morally inconsistent. You have to look at these other animals in a similar way that you look at dogs. Not every dog can provide something for you. What if the stray dog was disabled or, you know, had two legs missing and needed help? Like, you wouldn't say, well, you know what, you're, you're, you can't provide anything for me so you don't have any value. Maybe we should just chuck you on the barbecue. And I'm sure you'd be horrified at Yulin Dog Meat Festival where they round dogs up and uh, boil them alive and cut their, you know, heads off and feed their body parts to the attendees at Yulin. You'd be horrified at that, but look, these other animals that you're eating, there's no difference to them. So this is my challenge to Big Tate, the top G. Let me take you into some factory farms. We'll film the whole thing. I'll take you into some uh, factory farms in England where, the high, where they've got the highest standards in the world. You probably won't accept this. You're too, you're too much of a big deal to accept this. You might not even watch this. You might. But uh, I do think you've got a heart in there. I do think like a lot of what you say is just for shock tactics. I do think you've got a lot of impressionable people following you. I think you're very successful. I think you're a good kickboxer. I think you're incredibly wrong on a lot of your philosophical points that you haven't thought through consistently. If you want to come into some farms with me, I can make that happen and you can see exactly how human beings treat animals. You can look at the pain inside of the, a mother pig's eyes when she's in a farrowing crate, dead piglets all around her. And maybe you'll see some of your rescue dogs in the eyes of these animals. We can show you footage from inside our family run slaughterhouses where cows are begging for mercy. They don't want to die. Can show you scenes from inside of uh, big chicken farms. I can take you into big chicken farms and you can see these little innocent beings, three, four weeks old, already dying on their faces, struggling to breathe. We can show you all these things, Tate, and then see if you change your mind about whether or not veganism is a moral system that is worth applying to your life or worth taking on yourself. So that is my response to the big top G and Andrew Tate. Mate, look, if you see me, maybe I'll, I'll walk up and shake your hand, but please no snap kicks. Maybe I'll take you for a vegan burger and uh, happy to take you into any of these farms to see any of these things. I think there's a heart in there because he does care a lot about dogs and I've seen a glimpse of his real personality when that little stray dog walked up to him and he had the machete in his hand but patted the dog. Just asking you, Tate, if that dog was a cow, would you have cut the cow's head off with a machete and eaten him? 
Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.